Welcome to this very first episode of Going Off Piste With, hosted by me, Shemi Orcott, brought to you in association with Off Piste Gin, the show where I convince my celebrity pals to join me in this virtual chat by suggesting that it will be a straightforward standard interview, which as you will soon see, it is anything but. Move my hips a bit, side to side. I do like doing a bit of Beyonce like that. I'm not lying, I'm swiveling to find you. You're teasing the wrong way around. The only thing I've got going for me is my quads. My opening guest today, very excited to say, is the one and only Britain's skiing golden boy, Dave Riding. Let's have a look. Expose yourself, Dave. Not in that way, but get that trophy out the way. Beautiful trophy, though it is. Move Big memories guy. from that. Hi, yeah. Dave. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. You? Yeah, really, really good. Now, a little bit of background. Um, I first met Dave around 15 years ago. Uh, that's when I remember meeting him. He was very young, so we may have met when he was a little whippersnapper, but that's when he made it onto the British development team. Um, instantly recognisable by his bleach blonde hair, frosted tips, and his, nice way of putting it, very lean frame. It's safe to say that uh, your legs have filled out a lot since then. <laughs> He was always obsessed with slalom. You're always obsessed with slalom, having honed your skill for years at Pendle Slope. Pretty new to ski racing when you got on the, the development team, but you've been coached by your dad, solid foundation. But who back then would have predicted that the man beside me would be the best ski racer that Britain had ever produced? Dave, you're an absolute legend. I really appreciate you being here today with me. How is life at this just crazy time? Um... It's pretty not, well, not normal, but it's like, uh, it's very much, I'm doing what I should be doing and no distractions. So sleeping well, eating well, training a lot and nothing else. So <laughs> yeah, the basics. So today, today, if your season had gone to plan, you probably would have had your holiday already and you would be back on the grind in the physical training right now, wouldn't you? Yeah, and I've just got back from my honeymoon. Um, that was cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah, I would be, I would be uh, back a couple of weeks into training, yeah, but in, instead I'm about six weeks, five, six weeks back into training. So. Oh, you're ahead. Brucey bonus. Uh, I think everyone is, yeah. <laughs> now listen, t turning kind of a bit more jokey, this, this pandemic, it didn't just affect you professionally, you've kind of alluded to this, it affected you personally. It caused you to postpone your Austrian wedding, which was more upsetting. What, the season or the wedding? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh. You've got to say the wedding. <laughs> oh, Tristan. Tristan's going to be at you now. No, Tristan's no. Uh, Dave's coach for everyone. Um, lovely yeah. bloke, but he's very intense. Yeah. He used to be your assistant coach, didn't he? Yeah, he's epic. He's a character. But yeah, I mean, that must have been gutting. I think you knew pretty early on that you wouldn't be able to get married. And yeah, marry. I mean, um, Mandy had put in all the work, uh, mm -hmm. obviously. I was, <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to deny that. Um, and I, it's one of those things, it's out of your control, so you can't dwell on it. And um, Mandy was thank like she got over it as well, relatively once she realised. It was quite obvious quite soon that it wasn't going to happen. So, um, yeah, yeah, we just pushed it back again. All right. Well, talking about Mandy, um, you guys bought a coffee shop. Now, if I mapped out the day riding I knew, I wouldn't think investing in a coffee shop as his retirement plan would, would be part of it. But I just love that. Where did that come from? Uh, well, I never even used to like coffee until about seven years ago. And now I'm like obsessed. Um, so I always had this big, like dream of trying it. And then obviously Mandy's Dutch. So she moved over to the UK. Um, so it kind of, it gave Mandy a, um, something to focus on in the village. So she came over, she's got a, she's got a, um, a job in the cafe. She runs a cafe. I do next to nothing, of course. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of, uh, killing two birds with one stone as such it, it it gave Mandy a base and it also enabled me to I had this burning desire in my head um to see what it was like like the the out the big wide world and yeah whether I keep keep it going well into after skiing I don't know yet but um yeah it's certainly cool on the side just to see how a business works and, yeah. and runs and, and and help Mandy out from the sideline obviously <laughs> My personal interest in this actually, Dave, is because I always wanted a coffee shop because I love coffee and yeah. I thought I would just go there, drink coffee and talk to people. Now, the reality <laughs> is it's a lot of hard work, isn't it? It's not yeah. all about the social. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I go there, drink the coffee and chat to the guests while Mandy and the, the other people there work. <laughs> yeah, it's cracking. But you just, um, you just opened up with, uh, obviously with social distancing, you opened up, you're now oh, doing... Just take away, just take away, yeah. Take one day, yeah. Just one day a week on a Saturday, see how it goes, coffee cakes and uh, hot drinks and... It's just, very popular, isn't it? You've got a yeah. really quite cultish following up there. Yeah, it's quite cool. And um, I think people up here just, they just wanted something a bit normal. So like, if we'd opened every day, it's just not going to work. But if we can focus on one day and then the people come for one day, then yeah, yeah. it certainly gets something going with the cafe. Right now, a few off piece questions before we go silly. Do you know that you have a presence on Spotify? There is an artist called Dave Riding. Uh, he doesn't have many followers, but it's like jazzy background music. So I thought you could kind of bring like that. that. <laughs> um, a few more who came up with the nickname the rocket um it was a few dry slope mates when i was when i was younger um, really it's been it's that long in existence yeah yeah it was when i was about 16 i think and they they would do i don't know they just had a few things going and then they were well i don't need to get into it but they came up with the rocket yeah it was two two, two lads that i, I knew well Oh, you owe them quite a lot because that's genius yeah, no. marketing. That. Yeah. Um, what's your karaoke song, Dave? What I supposed to sing a song? Yeah. <laughs> no clue. The reason I ask you that is because when you were on the the GB development team, just um, I've got quite a lot of inside information on this because you were with my husband. Uh, yeah. You were known for having great hair but a shocking taste in music. Do you have any comment on that? Has anything changed? Yeah, still do. <laughs> you still got great hair. <laughs> Terrible dancing moves, which I was trying in the mirror once, and our coach, our Austrian coach, walked past, looked at me, and was just like, "Oh dear." See, I would always think that Slalomski is the top of the game must know how to dance, you know, with all that like hips. No. Yeah, I can move my hips a bit side to side, but that is a, it's not cutting it apparently. Right. Okay. Now I'm throwing to social media the first question. I'm going to tell you who they're from as well. Um, but you own a coffee shop. But what's the difference between a flat white and a cappuccino? That's from Charlie Guest. Oh, you that's right know that's your teammate. Well, cappuccino, to keep it simple, has more of a froth on it. A flat white's pretty much no froth, and it's just a warm milk in the coffee. You actually know it. Yes. Right, Pete on Instagram. A bit silly. Um, who would win between you and Graham Bell if you skied on one ski? He must be a big fan because well, uh, I don't know how good your one ski skiing in. If he's if he's going down. Is he on one ski? No, you're on one ski. He's on two. Well, if, he, if he's going down a downhill, then I've got no chance. But, if he, but watching him race you in Stockholm in that parallel, I think <laughs> I might have him. He hasn't done many slalom turns for a long no. time. Do you do much one ski stuff? Um, occasionally. Occasionally. Not, I don't massively focus on one ski stuff. More when, probably four years ago when I was working a lot on my left. My left, left turns. Those damn left turns. Yeah, I remember that. But now I have to learn to link both turns again. Oh, yeah. That's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> okay, this is the bit you've been looking forward to. I think you know that I'm going to go a bit uh, more off piece. First of all, we have got the emoji quiz. Now, they're all ski resorts that you've raced in, I think. Right, so have a look at the emoji. What does it say to you? What's that first one say to you? Smile bell. <laughs> right, yes, so? Come on, you've got it almost. You've got the end. Bell? Bell, yeah. You've raced there. I think you might have won your first. Oh, Mary Bell. No! <laughs> okay, number two. Number two. This is easy. St. Anton. Yes! <laughs> okay, number three. Keep the roll on. What can you see? What can you see? Is it a cat or is it? Yeah, it's a cat, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, but a it's mouse. a bit, bit loose with that. It's two, it's two cats, I guess. And then yeah, what's yeah. the last thing? Two cats and a cow. No, that's not oh, a cow. Oh, kit's fuel. Two yes! Cats and oh, you're storming this. Right, next one. Um, this isn't actually a ski resort, but we drive through it a bit. Uh, what's the first thing? What's the middle thing? Petrol pump. Yeah, in America. What do we call it? Gas station. Gas, gas, take gas. And the last thing in Austria, what's a beer called? A beer. <laughs> uh, okay, if you eat beans all the time, what do you get? Bad wind. Okay, so bad. 
Bagas do you? Stein. Bagas Stein. Yeah. Okay. Next one. It's, it's soup. Is it? It's um. They they. I think they have more more of this up north actually where you're from in the winter. Broth. No, it's got it's more substantial. It's got more things in it. How is it? What's the second one? Wave. What do we say at the end? Goodbye. Okay, so bye. And bye. it's a glacier. Oh, stew bye. Yeah, it's a stew. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and the last one, I like this one. Kiss What's he doing? Music. Kiss music. Uh, yeah, really yeah. My, my brain is like pulsating right now. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you a clue. You, an Italian won the slalom here in a very big event. I'm going to start with that. Vancouver. Oh, yes! Well, I just know it because Ratsoli won the Olympics. Yes, exactly. So where did you race the Olympics? <laughs> oh, Whistler. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Well done. That was <laughs> shocking. I got <laughs> half, maybe. Come on, that was good. That was I good. was thinking, what the, where's the van in this? Where is it Vancouver? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. Right, I'm just going to get to my next questions. I think you did uh, very well there. Very well. I'm just trying to uh, get my next ones up because we're going to move straight on. You've got a pen with you, is that right? Yes, right. Get your pen out. Got it. You're now going to write, on one hand, I'd like you to write a big D. Like uh, in the palm? Yeah, in the palm, yeah, yeah. It's going to be there for weeks. Is that a permanent marker? Yeah. Okay, and on the other hand, you're going to write M for mother. The mother? Yeah. Great. On the to you, Dave, I've been messaging your future missus, the lovely oh. Mandy. She's helped me learn a lot more about the man behind the lycra. Are you ready? Those that, you don't need your hands first. It's like mother, talk. not Mandy. No, that's Mandy. I'm not going to ask questions mother. about your mum. I, you I, I know, but I didn't want to tell you what it's for yet. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, first up, I asked Mandy, what is Dave's most annoying trait during lockdown? What'd she say? Most annoying trait? It's probably winding her up. <laughs> but a trait would be... Most annoying trait. <laughs> Oh, so Dave's saying he's perfect here. Dave Ryan, I'm perfect during lockdown. I'm struggling to find, I'm not lying, I'm struggling to find something. <laughs> okay, well, apparently you leave your clothes all over the bedroom floor. Oh, that, I can't oh, win in this house. I can't win. <laughs> okay. right, because if I put my clothes in the wash, in the linen basket, then there's too many clothes of mine in the linen basket. Okay, okay. So, when this not quite... Dave, that's the first question. You're going to get a lot of these wrong, so let's not, don't get a chip on your shoulder yet, okay? Well, what did Mandy, it. this is a nice one, what did she say was your favourite thing about yourself? Let's say in terms of your personality first. What do, you think, what do you think is your best personality trait that Mandy would have said, told me? Humour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she, she said it was your determination, your kindness. Isn't that sweet? Oh, there you go. You said you get along with everyone. I try to. Yeah, and what about physically? What does she think that you love about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not my biceps. <laughs> I, the only thing I've got going for me is my quads. You got one right! There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, you're on a roll now. She's, um, actually, she's actually had to turn part-time physio in this lockdown. Because I've needed some massages, so she's stepped up. Just get a foam roller. Give well, you a, give one, a break. I've got one, but it's like a massage. Okay, what are you most likely to argue about? Ooh. Her leaving the pots on top of like the dishwasher and not just putting them in the dishwasher. Don't be too personal on this, because <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> Anything else, like in the bigger picture? Most likely have... to argue about. It's, it's just petty things because I'm always tired with training and just little things will just be like, um, like blah, 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 and then she'll. <laughs> she, she said the cafe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm really worried I'm gonna cause problems here. Okay, here's a good one. What does Mandy say that your biggest fear is? My biggest fear? Mm. Hmm. Maybe what others think. 
She, mm. she says, and she's worried about, I'm worried about this one because she says she thinks she knows this, but she says it's um, jumping off massive heights like skydiving. So do you suffer? Oh yeah, no chance. So you do have acrophobia? Well, not really. Like, I'm not bothered in gondolas and all that. Okay, okay. Looking over cliffs, I'm like, whatever. But jumping out of a plane, you can figure. But no, no downhill airtime for you? Well, I could do that. Okay. That was the only thing I could do in speed. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here, it gets fun now. Right, who is your celebrity crush? Who did Mandy say is your celebrity crush? Was this a skier? I'm not, no, uh, no, I'm going to give you no, it's not a skier. Celebrity crush. Oof, I'm not sure I've ever mentioned it. D Dougie, my husband, kind of knew this one as well, just to give you a little heads up. But it's, been, it's, it's, it's deep ingrained, is it? <laughs> it's deep. It's been there for, for a couple of decades. Celebrity crush. Singer, singer. Singer. Madonna. <laughs> Beyonce, Beyonce, apparently. Oh, really? I do like doing a bit of Beyonce like that. <laughs> oh. Beyonce, mm, not bad, yeah. Okay, well, you Sorry, did okay man. there. You did okay. Let, let's end with a quick fire. Five okay. questions. The answer is either Dave or Mandy, right? Yeah. Who's the messiest? Mandy! <laughs> Hell yeah. Not what she said. Look at our kitchen now. She's baking. <laughs> yeah, it's like a bomb site. Okay, who, who's the better looking? No, I'm definitely the messiest. Uh, better looking, definitely, Mandy. I've not aged well. She said you. Isn't that sweet? She's mental. She's only saying that <laughs> to keep me happy. Who chased who? Who chased who? Uh, a bit of both. I went to hers before she came to mine, so I'll say that I chased her maybe a bit more. Yeah, she said you definitely chased her. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Who, who's the better driver? It's definitely me. Yeah, yeah. Dave, oh, you're, te you're teased the wrong way around. <laughs> okay, ready for the last one. Slightly controversial. Who is the boss in your relationship? Definitely me. She said definitely you, but she said that she is the boss of the cafe. She is the boss of the cafe, and I'm happy about that because come the season, I ain't thinking cafe. I'm no, thinking no. snow. <laughs> I think you did really well then. You did better than I thought you'd do. Oh, yeah. A few things about yourself you don't know at all, but um, you f a few things you've forgotten, like being scared of heights and that you've loved Beyonce for I about... I wouldn't say it's heights. heights. It's just the fear of like jumping out of a plane when I just really don't have to put myself at that risk. No, oh, no. Okay, right, next up, we're going to do the middle class lockdown quiz. Have you made banana bread? No. Yes, you have. I'm not baiting nothing. All right. <laughs> Have you started growing tomatoes? Not tomatoes, radish, spinach. Okay, so that's a yes. Um, yes. Have you tried to make sourdough bread? No. No. Have you enjoyed drinks over Zoom? No. No. Um, well, Zoom came after our, like my load, my downtime. So. Okay. Okay. Now th this one is, is really technically, I know it's going to be a no, but if you substitute it for something else, have you enjoyed a 5 p.m. gym? Gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. That's despised tonic. Yeah. You're, you're still a kid's drinker. You need more like, yeah, you can't. can't that's breathing. an adult drink. Um, have you videoed your street clapping? No, I haven't. Really? You, you are not middle class right now. Have you done a Joe Wicks pee session? Hell no. <laughs> um, do you, or kind of probably better for, for uh, Mandy, fancy Rishi Sunak? Who the heck's that? Right, okay, don't watch the news much. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> Have you ordered from an independent shop? Like a takeaway? No, yeah, like, or, you know, from the butcher, get your meat from the butcher instead of everything oh, yeah. in the supermarket. You're trying to support local. Yeah, I've avoided supermarkets and I phone in orders to the butchers and nice. local veggies. Okay, big tick there. Um, have you done any crafts? But I'm going to change this one for you, like house maintenance. Yeah, painted the fence. Garden is my responsibility. All right. And right. it looks damn good. Okay. Hi, um, The last two are a bit weird. Have you drunk tea? Tea drinker? Yeah. Yep. I'm not uh, a big tea you... drinker, but I, did, I drank it in case the coronavirus was getting in my throat and I kill it. Yes, that is scientifically known, Dave, that it just hangs out in the throat and tea. Well, you know, if, you come, if I'd ever come in from the, sh like, if I had gone to the supermarket, I'd come in, shower, 
hot drink, first defence, washing hat, like everything was done to avoid that it. That is the most English mentality. How can I stop this pandemic, this deathly pandemic? I'll have a cup of tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, have you resulted to meditation? No. Apparently that's very fashionable. Okay, you got, you got around 50% there. Yeah, that was interesting. But you're baking, you, your, your kitchen area let you down a bit there. Yeah, I don't do that, man. No. And man. your emphatic no to Joe Wicks. I just don't have time for Joe Wicks. No. Well, he's doing, so he is giving back a lot to the NHS. He is. Last quiz, Dave. This is called Dish the Dirt. The World Cup Top 15. Who did it best? You are allowed to say yourself. Right, I'm going to start off PC. The most aggressive pre-race warm-up. Just a warm-up or before they go in? Before they go in, just like the whole, like, the attitude. Well, Henrik, Henrik likes to think he's bossing the joint and Zanehausen starts moving like a cow. Um, I don't know why, but you don't want to stand behind Zanehausen in the start gate. I think I, um, I think I need an impression of that. It's on YouTube. Actually, no, I need you to do it. I need you to do it right now. Well, he was in the gate. Oh, wait, let me get in there. Does he actually move? Come on, let's get, get in the zone. <laughs> Stomping his feet. It's literally that. And I'm standing behind him, like, that's yeah. maybe why I fell over. Pranger right? used to do it. Manfred Pranger used to be really aggressive. Well, Pranger used to do a bit more, like, come on, I'm falling, I'm doing it. Zane Housen's moving. That's amazing. I mean, there are a lot of cows in Switzerland. Very, you know, prestigious cows. Um, he's a nice guy. He's, nice he's, guy. he's harmless, but he's moving in the gate. Well, there you go. It actually works for him, though, doesn't it? But, yeah. It does. Yeah. Who, um, best training partner, top 15? Uh, I train a lot with Horoshilov. He's great. Good guy. Yeah. So good. Buddies. Um, the most equipment perfectionist? Not, now Hirsch is gone. Um, oh, I don't know. I wouldn't know that one because I don't, not, I don't train with that many people. See, I thought it would be you. Mm. Do you know I mean, I, I like, I like, you do it, but... like it. You like knowing everything, don't you, Dave? Well, I had to. Like, I used to do my own skis until I was 28, so I had to know everything. So. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we're not going to have an answer to that. Um, best it would have been Hersha. Hersha, okay. Best all round athlete? Ooh. Don't know. Maybe Andre Nira would have been in his prime. Hmm. Hmm. Big, the big, big lad. I'd say I'm, um, up there. I'm up there. You're up there. Okay, good, good. You yeah. can, you're allowed to back yourself. Yeah, I'm up there. Um, Okay, I mean, the next ones will be a bit weird if you back yourself, but you get a bit silly now. The best hugger. You know, you've come down, you've had a great race, someone comes over and it's like, oh, yeah, pre-coronavirus, contact, boom, come to me. <laughs> I'm not doing much hugging at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, like, come on, think about Kitzbühel, you're in there, you've just come second. Who came over to you and was, like, gunning for you? Cuddling. Yeah, horror, horror, her ship. Uh, yeah. Sounds Lizaru, like the cool Lizaru, 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 Lizaru's maybe the, the guy that would do oh. that. Like, yeah, I'd go Lizaru. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Not top 15 now, but he is like world yeah, class. Yeah, no, no, that's all right. Um, best complimenter. Ooh. I maybe. remember Fisher used to be really nice about you. Obviously, he's retired, but like he would always respect you for pushing him. I love that. Um, Lizaru, a lot of compliments. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, who is the best singer? You know, like on the girls' tour when we're warming up, everyone starts like humming tunes and stuff. Daniel Yule for sure. Really? Does he sing in English? He's always sing whatever language you want. Italian to serenade the ladies. <laughs> French for just as morning rituals, and then I don't know. That's amazing. Uh, who's got the best moves? We talked about slam skiers being epic dancers. Uh, probably Felix Neureuter, but he's retired. Oh yeah. He did. He liked, he liked to dance, didn't he? Yeah, okay, here we go. It's just, that's Felix, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who would be your three musketeers on a night out? Obviously, this is an um, imaginary night out. because you're going three out. weeks off. Three weeks off. You've got, you've got a few mates from World Cup Tour. You can say, come over to the north of England. We'll go down to Pendle Dry Ski Slope. We'll have yeah. a few beers. <laughs> I'd say Yule, Johnny Nordbottom and Horoshilov. Oh, that's a great crew. Yeah, that's good. They're a good guy. That's yeah, they seem really different to me as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like that. Um, now, your best wingman, obviously, if you didn't have an amazing fiancé, if you were going out in the pool and you needed someone to come and help you. Now, you don't yeah. want to be too good looking, Dave. You don't want to be too, you've got to put some thought into this. 
you probably have to take a damn good skier because they get a lot of attention. And then <laughs> yeah. you just get the ones that are cast off. Tomba! Take Tomba! Yeah, you definitely take someone like Tomba. <laughs> yeah. Um, who would you let cut your hair? I need it cut now. Um, I yeah, think someone know. like someone like Daniel Yule. Yeah, didn't, yeah. Just make sure. I'm not sure. That's not yeah. a bad thing. Okay, here's the, here's the here's your biggest bromance. Two more. Biggest bromance. Oh. It can be someone who you miss past. Someone I miss. Oh, maybe some a guy called Trules Johansson. He was like my bro on the tour, but he was he awesome. took you under his wing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, and he was a bit one... younger than me, but yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, which dude can wear Uggs tucked into their jeans and get away with it? Sebastian Foss Solovag. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. His Instagram's littered with these fashion moves and my cousin is just loving him. And I'm like, yeah, but look at that. That wouldn't work. And she's like, it works on him. It works. Really? Yeah. The last one, right. Who's the retired athlete whose skills you'd most like to emulate? It's got to be Hersher. <laughs> and before Hersher? Retired? Yeah. Do you watch anyone and think, you know what, he's got something that if I had, boom. Um, I used to always like Benny Reich. Mm. That's pretty boring. Yeah. Quite, he's quite too fitted. He was like the first of that who wasn't so like outside ski to outside ski. Mario like, Matt, he had the cool hair and I had him yeah. on my wall. Mario Matt. I, I actually always used to like coming through, it was always Grange and Lizard. Was it? How nice that then they're, they're your mates now. They're still there. Yeah. yeah. You're still there too, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Dave, thank you. That's been scintillating, surprising, and very special indeed. I much appreciate you joining me today. Thank you for being my first ever guest on Going Off Peace with me, Chevy Orcott. No problem, thank you.